Competitors can't swim. The, 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 the main attraction, busy is who y'all came to see. The way I crash stage and I break the mic, you need a license just to be a six me. This is Charity Love. I'm here with Full Moon Productions. I'm interviewing Tony Gaskin. Tony Gaskin is the Sometimes I don't know why, but I, I hear it sometimes. I remember meeting an artist, and he was kind of a big artist, and he was like, "Man, I'm never nervous. I'm nervous right now." So, you know, after we sh shook hands, and I was getting ready to interview him for a documentary. So I don't know, maybe because I'm quiet, it might make you scared or something. <laughs> but it's crazy because um, you're really like a down to earth, humble person, and. I don't know, for some reason I wasn't thinking that you would be so inviting and cool. <laughs> so that's cool. Um, oh wait, first I have to talk about the book that you signed for me. <laughs> I purchased a book from him and I was all excited. I seen him on Oprah. I was like, I'm getting this guy's book. I purchased a book from him and then he signed it to someone else, crossed out, crossed the name out, and then wrote mine under it. And I did not feel special. <laughs> what had happened was, <laughs> see, sometimes I, I do what they call struggle shipping. So it's like when I ship it out, <laughs> if I get a lot of orders, I run out of books so fast. And then sometimes some come back because the person put the wrong address. So I bet what happened was somebody's book came back. <laughs> then your order came in and I didn't have any other books. And you would have had to wait like another two weeks. So I just figured I'd just, you know, scratch their name out, put yours. You know? He was like, she needs this information. So let me just hurry and get this to her. Just, just get it out <laughs> but you know what? The book was so good that I didn't even care anymore. Awesome. So that was like the best part of it. Because normally I'm like real particular about that. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> and at least with the scratched out name, you know that like it's you real. Did. Like, right. I did, yeah. <laughs> like it wasn't a stamp or anything. That's so true. Okay, so um, I went to your website and I know that you have a lot of things going on. You have a couples retreat, so I wanted you to talk about that because I'm not actually sure what they do at a couples retreat. <laughs> right. Really just couples going on vacation together mm -hmm. and then we're going to have one day of workshops. Just my wife and I leaving some discussions, you know, just talking, understanding one another, men understanding women, women understanding men, and just trying to create a dialogue so that we can seek to understand and be understood. This is our first time doing it, so it's going to be fun. So it's not anything like I really thought, because I was thinking like a counseling session? <laughs> no, some couples may ask for that. Like couples you know? therapy or yeah, something? Yeah, they may ask for that. And it may get, you know, a little deep. They, there may be some tears, you know. There may be some arguments in the room later between couples, you know, just from the talks, but hopefully it's a good time and everybody is having fun and happy to be there, just really reconnecting to love. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what inspired you to do life coaching? Now, I read something somewhere and it said something about your wife and, you know, your past, history, right. and all of that. So, did your wife really inspire you to? She inspired me to write my book. She supported me. And then the life coaching really was just a natural progression. You know, after you write a book and you're learning how to build your brand, you're told to, you know, become a speaker, which I wasn't a speaker. I'm very quiet, very shy. And that you also can coach on the subject. And so I branched into coaching. So I learned about it and realized that this is something that a lot of us do naturally. And when I realized that it was actually a business, it 
just seemed like the perfect you know thing for me to do. Oh. <laughs> Did you ever um, have any like drama with other males? Because I know a lot of women post their quotes. <laughs> right, right, yeah, and that's why I have security. Oh yeah. <laughs> Shout out to security. <laughs> because sometimes he looks like he doesn't play there. Yeah, yeah, because you know sometimes <laughs> guys you know, guys get upset and they blame me for you know what they did wrong. And so what I post online, you know, my truth may kind of expose some people, and men and women, but mostly the men because I'm speaking from a male perspective. So I'm kind of writing my wrongs. I'm speaking to the games that I used to play. Mm -hmm. And so if a man is playing those games and his woman, it clicks and she recognizes like, oh wow, this is coming from another man that this is a game. And so guys can get upset, you know, they can get upset. And you, know, you just never know, you know, if it's a guy crazy enough to try to do something. That's true. You know? <laughs> what makes a true life coach? Like, do you have to go through courses, get a certificate? I, I think I think you God gifted. I think you have to be God gifted, and certification technically mm -hmm. isn't required. Mm -hmm. And even if it was, it still wouldn't mean anything if you're not called to do what you're doing. You know, and so whatever you're called to do, you'll be validated from it. You know, you'll gain opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so for me to go from being untrained by man, but gifted by God, and to become a celebrity life coach, coaching celebrities on television, you know, on their own TV shows, and you know, being a speaker for the NBA, which speaking is life coaching, just it's group coaching. For, for those things to happen, I know that God had his hand you know, on, on what I'm doing. And so for me, I feel like that's where my validation comes from, it's his favorite. How was it working with Oprah, and how did that come about, and how did you feel? Um, I was pitching myself to Oprah's, you know, show, and there's this thing called a timely pitch, and so there was an incident that happened in the media with a relationship um, in 2009, Chris Brown and Rihanna, right. and I had a chapter in my book on toxic control and abusive relationships, and so I used that, you know, current event to pitch myself in my book. Mm -hmm. And Oprah allowed me to come on and tell my story from when I was in college with my girlfriend and we had a physical incident. And so I had to take it, you know, put myself out there and show like, look, I've gone through this. I've learned from it. It wasn't on the level of Chris Brown and Rihanna. I can't even picture you hitting anybody. And I follow your it, wife it wasn't, online. It wasn't, it wasn't, it, it, wasn't, like it, it wasn't hitting, you know. It was grabbing, pushing, shoving. Oh, it was a physical altercation. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't punching, it was no police, it was no bust lips or anything like that. But abuse is abuse. And so that was my angle. It was my time to get in and talk, speak to toxic relationships, how they come about, how we get in them. Because, you know, as we know, nine out of ten relationships are, at some point, abusive. And so that was my way of kind of coming out to the world and, you know, exposing myself, telling my story of how I grown and that's what I teach from experience you know, I, and, and for me to go to the, the biggest you know stage in the world being Oprah and admit my faults that was the way that I wanted to start my career mm -hmm. so that people know I'm not you know this knight in shining armor coming and trying to you know seem like I've never made a mistake. I noticed that you started watermarking your um, quotes and putting your picture in the background because everybody was just stealing <laughs> Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like Tony Gaskins on everything. Right. Um, I am a fan of your wife, so I follow her too. So does she do any uh, motivational speaking with you? Do you guys do it together? Or are you no. guys going to have a tour together? Because you guys are like the ultimate power couple. She may start speaking at some point, but you know, it's not really her calling as of yet. Mm -hmm. And so she doesn't have any desire to. Oh. If she did, it would be cool, but I think sometimes it's good to be with somebody who doesn't do what you do so that they can truly support you. And I'm not into what she does, the things she's into, fashion and fitness, so I can truly support her. And so we don't have to be competitors, you know, we can be supporters. And 
when we need one another, then we can kind of, you know, collaborate. But a lot of people say, when your wife gonna speak? When your wife gonna speak? But I'm not gonna push her to do something that she doesn't feel called to do, or try to coerce her to do something because it may make a lot of money. You know, I'm not gonna do that. I want it to be authentic and genuine and you know, in God's timing, if it's meant to be. Do family members and friends ever call you and ask you for too much advice because they know that you write these books and things? So are they like, yo, tell me, um, my wife is, you know? Um, not as much as you would think, you know, but when they really need it, they do. But not a lot. I mean, it, it, ironically, this was the crazy thing when my own mother came to me and asked me to make one hour a week available to be her life coach. Oh. And I was just blown. It just didn't even sound right coming out of her mouth, but I'm there for her. You know, I, I coach her um, on her relationship, you know, whatever. And, but other than that, I've had some, some family members and some friends I've grown up with actually pay me, you know, hire me, treat me like a professional. And then you have those who just want some advice and you know I'll bless them. If, if I knew you before I started doing this, then you know, you get free support <laughs> right. for life. Because I'm like people will call you and say, Oh, I just want to invite you to my event and then just start talking for a long conversation right. and you're like, wait, the conversation's going somewhere else. <laughs> right. That's cool. No. It's so much, like on the website already. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot going on. Just TonyGaskins.com, you know, connect with me. Tony Gaskins on everything, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And thank you all, Full Moon Productions and you, Charity, for having me here in Cleveland. <laughs> I appreciate you. Thank you. It's Charity Love, and I'm signing out with Tony Gaskins. It was a pleasure talking to you. I learned a lot. I'm definitely going to apply all of this stuff to my life and um full moon productions definitely and um shout out to big head take five for having this event <laughs> all right thank you very much You know it's there. Yeah. It's Illmatic and it's Mark B. Okay. Y'all like, here they go again. The flows they be showing them. How to keep your hair up by the rim. Sorry if you get ducked on. Most competitors can't swim. The, 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 the main attraction. Busy is who y'all came to see. The way I crash stage and I break the mic. You need a license just to be a six me. Show after show, it's a killer spree. From a sight for whoever coming after me. Cause y'all know that we kill this. And everybody else is obsolete. This proving grounds. Rock concerts. You know we doing this. It's on the daily, y'all won't stop till y'all love this. And my turn level is over 80. Going too hard, you would say I'm crazy. 